and I they recall that I had seen that picture in the in the room of one of the Indian students who had invited me to his uh, place for lunch as a professor. In, in America, it's very common for professors to go for lunch with students, and I still remember that photograph. So I, I it was in my mind that someday I must go and see Parmacharya. And it happened in 1977 election. There was a Tamil Nadu uh, election for the assembly after the parliament election in which Janata Party came to power. And I am now the sole surviving founding member of the Janata Party because everybody else left it. I am the only one who has not left it. And uh, but I I remember that I was campaigning and I was passing through Kanchipuram, and uh, there was a crowd. In a, it was not in. The, in the Kanchi Mutt, but it was in a village a little away, maybe 20 kilometers away. And there, there was a small hut and there was a big crowd, lots of cars. So I asked my people, what's going on here? Then they gave me the name, they said, Paramacharya is here. That's why everybody is here. So I said, oh, then I want to see you. And I went to uh, the hut where he was sitting, and I appeared just like that. There were other people also standing. And then he looked at me, and he got up and went inside. So I, I didn't know, you know, some, something about me must have upset him, that's why he went inside. So I started to leave. Who were looking after Samachari came running, said, Perivar on the Kupadra. So I went back. So he asked me, how did you leave without? He asked me, Tamil, Uttar Villama, you can't be dead. So I, I saw you, uh, you saw me and you went inside, so I thought you didn't want to see me. So therefore I decided to leave. No, no, I went inside to get this piece of paper. And he, he gave it to somebody, he gave it to me. I opened it and it was a question answer with my photograph in uh, those days there was uh, uh, there was the Indian Express magazine called Dinamani Kadir uh, or something, I, I forget what it was. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the question was that Subramanian Swami is regarded as a hero of emergency, is he a chameleon? So the answer is, yes, yes, he is from Sholo Andan, so he is he, from uh, Tamil Nadu. He is from Tamil Nadu. So he asked me, Nida na is there? So I said yes. Then he said, now we can go. <laughs> that first meeting. <laughs> and uh, second meeting happened after after about a year, pretty away, and spent uh, at least an hour and a half with me, speaking about everything political. But he made it clear that he normally doesn't speak politics, and uh, but he is making an exception. And I took that to mean that uh, I should not give it in the newspapers as many others were doing. And he traced the whole Indian history so magnificently for me short while. He even explained to me that we should oppose E.V. Ramaswamy Naikar at the brain level, he said, not physically. Because he is one man and he has turned his elaborate mulayam mati Ade mati so he told me, your job is to work on ideas in politics. And you do what you think is right. Don't chase position, don't chase money. When it's required, both will come. I must say, when people said that I dare to stand and dare to speak, it's that original inspiration which is guiding me. Because I found, when I've been in difficulty, money has come. I found when everybody had written my career off, I became a minister. So, therefore, there is that, uh, obviously, uh, a, is the blessings in this background. And therefore, over the years, I had been interacting with him. So today, when I speak to you about the Hindus under siege, many of these problems he had told me much earlier. And said, sometime or the other, it will come. So one of them was, was conversion, which we didn't take very seriously. Today it's a very serious problem. The other is terrorism, which is also directed against 
Hindu, Hindus only. Only Hindus die, die in a terrorist attack. Religious conversion, only Hindus are getting converted. Nobody else is getting converted. If you look at the uh, at the uh, at the rubbishing of Hindu icons, it is the Hindu icons who are getting rubbished. The arrest of Swami Jayendra Saraswati is a is taken place only in the, because he happens to be a Hindu uh, Swamiji, and obviously the reason was that he was going amongst the Dalits, and he was a challenge to the conversion forces, and they worked through Jalalita and got it done. And Jalalita was a willing tool for that. I hope she regrets it someday and makes uh, thus prayas chit, proper prayas chit for it. But the fact of the matter is that that also, look at the history book distortion. Look at what is happening in the United States. Recently there is a book now, I think uh, two days so I was taken aback that you should be asking me this question all of a sudden. <coughs> so I said, they have come to Afghanistan, tomorrow they will come to Pakistan, then they will come to India. That is their pattern. No, no, don't waste your time on Soviet Union. It will be finished. It will break up. 1980, at the peak of Soviet power, I would say, you know, I said, I can't believe that, you know, I, could, I couldn't say to him. <laughs> I, uh, I said to myself, is he saying? And that's exactly what happened. The Soviet Union broke up into 16 countries, become irrelevant. It doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore. As I told Namudri Pad that for years you've been saying there's no inflation in Soviet Union, there's no unemployment in Soviet Union, there's no poverty in Soviet Union, now there's no Soviet Union also. <laughs> so, uh, here is you know, the perspective that I got. Then he said, I said then what should I do? So he said, India needs only two friends, China and Israel. And we were having the worst possible relations with both at that time, when he told me this. He told me this in 1977, that India needs only two friends, China and Israel. And our Radu Bihar real name is Tonalgo Pandatkapadev. So I said, uh, China, uh, Israel, the country doesn't even recognize Israel. <laughs> they won't even give me a passport to go to Israel. How I can develop the relations? They said, no, no, no. That's all he would say to me. But every time I came, he would ask me, have you done anything about Israel? Have you done anything about Israel? And China. I said, China, they have taken away our, our territory. They are our enemies. How can we have, how can we have it? No, 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 no. You need them. You must know when to make friends and when to make allies. So I thought, how do I know when to make friends and when to make allies? So he says, Vishwachari Pair Ketu Kya. In fact, I didn't, I was brought up in the north, so I didn't know much Tamil. In fact, I could hardly speak Tamil. So he, he, used, to, he used to appreciate, uh, he, used to, he never spoke to me in anything except Tamil. But he said, one day you will start speaking in public meetings in Tamil. <laughs> public meetings in Tamil. My own style of Tamil is different from the Dravidian Tamil. But, Everybody understands my Tamil, nobody understands Karna and this time. <laughs> uh, with China, you, you have to do. Then, of course, I happen to be an expert on China, I speak Chinese. So I made a contact. And soon enough, out of the blue, to the surprise of everybody, uh, the Chinese invited me to visit China. Then, Moraji decided to head of course to China. So I was wondering how I can go. I was an MP of his party. He was the Prime Minister. So I went and met Murari. Says Chinese? How can you go and have there any dealings with them? They are enemies. So I come back uh, uh, before I go further on that. I asked Parnacharya, how do I decide who should be friended and who should be who should be opposed? So he said, Vishwacharya had given an upadesh to Arjuna. And they were after the battle was over. And he cited a, a story about a rat and a cat. He said, those two can never get together. 
But there was a rat who was living in a hole and it couldn't come out and play because the cat was sitting on the top of the tree watching for it to come out so it could pounce and eat it. So the rat was very unhappy. One day he found the rat shrieking. So he came out and looked and he saw that a hunter had put some net and the cat had walked into it and the net was, you know, that's an old hunter's method of, of catching animals. And then uh, and the hunter, uh, the net had gone up and it was suspended from a tree. So the rat was very pleased and it started dancing around, moving around, you know, which, uh, having the fresh air which it could never have, till a snake came. And now the rat was too far away from the hole to go back running. The snake would have pounced on it. So he didn't know what to do. So he proposed to the cat that, see, you are stuck there and you can't get out, but I have sharp teeth, I can cut the net. And I have this problem with the snake. I will come and jump into your net. And you must shriek in such a way that the snake gets afraid and runs away. And save me. And then I will cut the net and let you free. So cat said definitely, deal me. <laughs> <laughs> so the rat jumped into the, uh, into the, into the net and then uh, the cat shrieked and the snake went away. So now he said, now please open the net. So the rat slowly started cutting. The cat said, what are you doing so slowly? You can do much faster. There the hunter will soon come. So no, no, I'm doing my best, I'm doing it. So it delayed, delayed, till the hunter started coming. That time the rat quickly uh, bit the uh, net ropes and the net uh, broke loose and the rat jumped out and the cat also went and climbed up the tree. So the hunter came, he saw the, you know, the net in this state, he didn't know what to do, just picked up the net and went away. And then, the rat came and peeked out again and the cat said, why did you take so much time? You broke an agreement with me. He, the rat said, I knew that if I had cut the net immediately, the first thing you would have done is eaten me up. So that's your nature. <laughs> so I had to wait till you found another danger before you. <laughs> so therefore, never make an alliance with a person whom you are doubtful about. Unless you are sure there is an escape route also. You know, that he can, without you could face a bigger danger. So that philosophy you should follow. You have to make alliances. And he said, with China also, you have alliances. You make an alliance with China, but always keep some door open. You know, somewhere China might be afraid of some other country. At that time, the Soviet Union. So keep a balance, he said, because now it will be the United States. So he said, with that in mind, you forget about all this border and all that, you can take care of itself. You make up with them, they will make up with you. So I, as his blessings were there, I told the Chinese embassy, I would you know, like uh, to meet the ambassador. The ambassador, the first thing he did was call me, because nobody was used to visit. And that to a member of parliament, I was general secretary of the party at that time. And so he immediately invited and said, We would like you to visit China. Kailash Mansur Ramdana, okay. Go and see if you uh, go and see it also. But the Chinese that time had shut the place up. They wouldn't allow anyone to go. But I was received by Tan Xiaoping, their biggest leader, and I proposed to him, to his credit. Tan Chao Singh said, there are some roads which have to be developed, etc. For 35 years, nobody has gone. So I'll open the, I'll get it all done. And if your people want to build a temple also, I will allow that. All this, I just couldn't believe. But for Parmachal, it couldn't have been possible. But he said, one condition. You must go first to Kailash and Mansur. Now, I've never climbed, uh, walked more than one kilometer in those days. I mean, uh, I used to lead a, a typic, typical urbanite uh, existence. Because nowadays, I walk quite a lot. 
But uh, those days I had uh, hardly walked, and certainly not up a mountain. I had to go 22,000 feet up and then cross into Tibet. And uh, so everybody dissuaded me when, when it was clear that Kalash Mansur would be open. But it, uh, I had given this promise that I would be the first one to go. So he, um, uh, everyone persuaded me, why are you doing this? You will fall off the cliff, you will die. If people go there to die, you don't do it. Finally, I went to again to him. He said, I don't know. And indeed, I went to go there. It was a hard job, but I had no incidents. Went and saw Kailash and Mansarovar. I had a bath in Mansarovar. And since then, every year, 500 people are going. That was got it open. I would have never thought about it. And I never would have believed that the communists would do it. In fact, that time, Watan Bihari Vajpayee was the foreign minister. He told me, you're spoiling our relations with the developing nations with China now. First you go and open it, and then after that, you uh, you want them to do things which are religion. They are, they are communists. They, you know, they will take it ill and on. But Moraji told me, don't worry. You raise the matter. So, like that, Throughout, there has been this kind of uh, guidance. And now today, what I'm going to speak to you is part of uh, the perspective that he gave me, Parmachari gave me in politics. I know very well that this is what will happen. Because one day, I, I, was, in, I was stuck in, a, uh, in near Velour with a flat tire, wondering what to do. Because there was nobody around. Suddenly I find uh, from Kanchipuram one car coming and uh, they, they came with a the mechanic, they fixed my car. So I shouted, you know, so Parmacharya said, Swami repair, tire puncture the koi pa 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 See, he drove the people. So that kind of backing I had, I had, I remember that uh, when the Janata party was broken by VP Singh, I didn't join VP Singh, everybody thought I was mad. Because that's where everybody went. But he told me you've done the right thing. And then he told me, you come for my birth birthday celebration. It was in May 1990. 95th birthday, I think. Mm -hmm. Something like 95th birthday. Was. And he put me on the same stage as Rajiv Gandhi. In the invitation also, the two names are there in one of the programs we need to address. And he said, you and he are going to be together. And uh, Rajiv and I became, we were already known to each other, but became like brothers, very, very close friends. Then he was assassinated. So I told him, this horrible thing has happened, I need to do something about this provocateur who's ordered the assassination.